Hey there, it's Bree, and this is the Banter Lover's Guide to Lauren Rowe. A couple of months ago, I did a slow burn lover's guide to Mariana Zapata, and I thought that a nice balance to doing a guide to Mariana Zapata would be a guide to Lauren Rowe, who not only writes epic banter, is fantastic at writing great chemistry between characters, but she is one of the few authors who can write a convincing insta-love story. I felt like Lauren Rowe was a great contrast to Mariana Zapata, who really, really makes you work for that romance, versus having the romance instantly catch fire and you totally buying it and totally believing that these two people are absolutely meant to be together from their very first meeting. Lauren Rowe has a very distinct writing style. Her dialogue is extremely strong. She writes hilarious, funny, lovable, charismatic characters who have the best banter and have the best comebacks and witty remarks out of any author that I've ever read. Her heroes are often extremely charming and lovable even when they're kind of grumpy they still have this magnetism to them. She also narrates a lot of her audiobooks, all of them I think except for the latest handful that have come out. She has narrated with John Lane who has this like deep, gruff, sexy voice. There's something about having an author narrate their own audiobooks, especially when they're really good at voice acting like Lauren Rowe is. You know that the humor and the comedic timing is just hitting on point. She's speaking it the way that she wants it to be heard. And then the audiobooks that she hasn't narrated herself, she has picked out really, really, really good narrators for them and they absolutely are perfect for the characters. Another great thing about Lauren Rowe is that most of her books are available on Kindle Unlimited and Audible Escape. So when I thought about making this video, one of the things I wanted to do was suggest where to start when starting her books if you've never read anything by Lauren Rowe before. And I struggled with this a little bit because a lot of her series interconnect, but they can be read as standalones. She has a handful of series that need to be read in order, and then she also has a series that can be read out of order. And then she also has written for a series that are complete standalones where the characters don't overlap at all. And when I initially read her books, the first book I read was Captain, which is part of the Morgan Brothers series, but it's not the first book in the Morgan Brothers series, although I think it maybe was the first book that was written for the Morgan Brothers series. And I don't fully understand the chronological order as far as like, what happens first, it almost doesn't really matter. I mean, even though you're seeing glimpses of things that are happening in these different series in a certain timeline, it doesn't really matter how you read them or if you read the other books, you won't feel lost at all. I thought about it and I decided that the best way to be introduced to Lauren Rowe is to start with her Morgan Brothers series. That is the series that, like I said, I started reading. It can also be read completely as standalones, so you don't have to read it in any particular order. However, However, the order that I'm going to tell you about them is the order that they're listed on Goodreads and I think that's a fine way to start reading them. We are going to start with Hero. This is Morgan Brothers book number one. This is Colby, the oldest brother's story. He is the more tame, low-key, most mature, I guess I would say, of the Morgan Brothers. He is a firefighter, so it's a firefighter romance, and it is also an insta-love romance. And I know that insta-love is a big turnoff for a lot of people, but like I said, give Lauren Roach chance because she writes the most convincing insta-love. This one is probably the most insta-lovey of all of her books, so if it's not something that you vibe with necessarily in this book, keep reading because I feel like this one is the most insta-lovey of them all. It's also an interracial romance and it has a single mother trope in it, so if you like that kind of thing you would like it. It's also pretty emotional, especially in the beginning, which is not something that she's typically known for, but she also does really well. And it also has all the other things that I said about Lauren Rowe books. It still has the banter. I mean, it follows this group of brothers who are extremely charismatic and funny and fun and charming and gentlemen, and they're just, it's fantastic. So you'll get all the things that you love out of Lauren Rowe from this book, but it has a little bit more of an emotional twist to it, especially in the beginning. And then book number two in the Morgan Brothers is Captain. This one follows Ryan, who's the second oldest brother of the Morgan Brothers. So this one is like an insta-love to 
to enemies to lovers. Again, romance. Ryan meets and falls in love with our heroine at a bar, except when she's going to the bar, she's pretending to be someone else. She's going out with one of her friends and they're just trying to blow off some steam. And he has literally just broken up with his girlfriend at this point and it did not end well. And he is at the bar just kind of hanging out by himself. I think he was meeting someone, I can't really remember. But then she comes in and they end up meeting at the bar and they just immediately hit it off and they have this great banter and so much chemistry. And then the ex-girlfriend comes in saying that they're still together. Our heroine is like, okay, see you bye. And she leaves and he only knows her fake name, which he doesn't know is a fake name. And so he goes on this like huge rampage trying to find her. It's such a great romance. I feel like if you don't like insta love, this will convince you that it can be done well. But it also has like that enemies to lovers vibe in it as well. Next up is Ball Peen Hammer. This follows the second youngest brother, Keen, who is one of my favorite of the brothers. Is he my favorite brother? I think he might be my favorite brother. The main reason why Keen is my favorite brother is because he is an extroverted introvert and I so connected with that. He is a male stripper, so it's like a magic mic romance, and he is extremely magnetic and has so much charisma, but he also like will give a thousand percent of himself in his performances and just when he's around people, but then he needs a lot of time to recover from that. He won't even like answer texts, he won't answer his phone. Like his family understands this, but they're also annoyed by that. And he just needs time to recharge because he is still an introvert even though he comes off as an extrovert. He's the most ridiculous of all the brothers, but at the same time he has this like hidden depth to him. And the whole romance is really great because it's a road trip romance. It is an insta-love. I mean, they end up falling for each other over a short period of time, but the road trip aspect of it is amazing. It has one of the best steamy scenes. Like when he first dances for her, whew, like if that scene gets my heart racing like none other. This is such a great book. I fell in love with Keen and I love Maddie, who he calls Maddie behind the camera. It's just adorable. Like the way he falls for her and doesn't like realize that he's falling for her is the most adorable thing in the world. And then the next book in the Morgan Brothers series is Mr. Bodyguard. This one actually isn't based on one of the Morgan Brothers. It's based on Keen's best friend Xander, who you absolutely fall in love with in Ball, P and Hammer. Like they basically, he basically is part of the family. He has a lot of Keen's traits, but he's much more toned down than Keen is. Like they, I think they call each other like wifey or something. It's adorable and I love them so much. But this is also a bodyguard romance, which is great. We all know and love bodyguard romances. And he is hired to be a bodyguard for this super popular pop singer Aloha, who I think was like a Disney type child star and then now she is a very popular pop singer and he is obviously not allowed to be in a relationship with her. He's supposed to be guarding her. It has a little bit of a forbidden romance aspect in it. It's really, really, really good. I love Xander so much and especially if you are looking for a bodyguard romance, you will really like this one. And then last but not least in the Morgan Brothers series is Rockstar. I remember I was so excited for this one to come out because I had been waiting for Dax's story. So Dax is the youngest brother of the family. He He's obviously a rock star. He's the lead singer of this band, but he is quiet, similar to Colby, but quiet in a more artistic way. He's much more of an artist than he is like the arrogant, conceited rock star, but he still has, you know, the typical Morgan brother traits that are in there. And this one also has a little bit of a forbidden romance aspect in it. It's an insta-love, but one of the things that I love the best about this book was the way he feels about the heroine. The whole thought process as he sees her and meets her and is getting to know her just had me swooning all over the place. Lauren Rowe has also added a lot of extras to this one. I think there is like a hardcover version of this book, which I need. Oh my god, you know what I just realized? I have these books and I could have been holding them up. I hate my life. <laughs> Yeah, so Lauren Rowe has a lot of extras for this one. There's music that goes along with this, and there's also like a music video that is made with the cover model for Rockstar, which I thought was awesome. She has invested a lot of time and energy into this, and we so appreciate it as fans. So that one was the last one of the Morgan Brothers series. I think the next series that should probably be read is the Club Trilogy, and this trilogy actually does need to be read in order. This trilogy is a romantic suspense, and 
and it is a romance between Jonas and Sarah. And Jonas is a twin. His brother has his own series, and they are connected to the Morgan brothers because Sarah's best friend, Kat, is the only sister of the Morgan brothers. She is the Morgan sister. So that's how this series is connected. And you do see Jonas and his twin brother Josh in the Morgan brothers series. You see little glimpses of them and also Kat obviously in the Morgan brothers series. I think I only read the first two books in this series and the only reason why I didn't finish the series is because romantic suspense really isn't my thing. But if you like romantic suspense, you'll absolutely love this one. I loved the first book in the series because I felt like the meet cute was so on point and I'm so into like especially Lauren Rose meet cute and seeing a relationship from the beginning and how it develops the way she writes it. It revolves around the club and it's a club that Sarah works for but she is more of just like a behind the scenes intake person and the club basically is almost like a high-end escort service where super wealthy guys put in their applications. They get matched with women based on their application and I think most of the time it's not meant for long-term relationship. I'm pretty sure it's meant for like hookups. Jonas puts in his application and Sarah is the one who's reading it and reviewing it. And she is so horrified <laughs> by his application because of how arrogant he is. But it's so on point for Jonas. Like he's not your typical arrogant, like super rich douchebag guy. He is arrogant, but he's also super smart. And I feel like he's a little bit socially awkward also in like a charming way, in my opinion. She is so horrified by his application that she like sends an anonymous email or what she thinks is an anonymous email to him, just like completely bitching him out about his application because she's so put off by it. And he is so immediately attracted to her because of the email in which she's bitching him out in that he ends up hiring one of his friends to hack into it and find out who she is. And I think they even start talking on the phone before they meet. So he already has fallen for her through just an email. So I just thought that was really interesting and it's just great when they finally meet and then there's this whole suspense element that is woven into the storyline as well that follows through throughout the trilogy. And then of course his twin brother Josh also has a story and his story is a romance with Kat. I believe this one is a romantic suspense as well. I've only read the first book in this series. Kat, like I said, is the sister of the Morgan brothers. What I love about this one is that Josh is your typical rich kind of playboy type guy, but in this book it's not your typical like rich playboy guy and the innocent virginal girl. Like Kat is a playgirl. Like she is a party girl. She doesn't want to settle down. She is absolutely not your virginal heroine and I love that about her and I love the combination of a hero who is infatuated with this girl who doesn't want to settle down and he is also kind of a playboy so they they are on the same level as each other and it's just it's so great I loved seeing them throughout the other series and seeing how their romance had progressed through the Morgan Brothers series and then that brings me to the Reed Rivers trilogy which isn't my favorite. Do I like it more than the Morgan Brothers series? I might. I think I might like it more than the Morgan Brothers series. I have been dying for Reed Rivers stories because you see him a lot in the Morgan Brothers series and you also see him in the other two trilogies. If I could describe him in one word, it'd be intimidating, but he's a grumpy, intimidating hero with a heart. And he almost doesn't realize he has a heart. He doesn't realize what an inherently good person he is because he's so intimidating and he's done some scary mean things to people in the past. He scares a lot of the Morgan brothers, which I think is absolutely hilarious. He is an extremely successful businessman. He owns a record label and he is absolutely cutthroat about it. Like he knows talent when he sees it and if he doesn't see it, he is not afraid to tell you that you suck and that you're not going to make it. And I like his take on it even though he can come off as kind of an asshole. He's kind of an asshole, like let's let's be real. But to me, he was a likable, intriguing asshole and he also has a certain magnetism to him. And the meet cute in this one is absolutely fantastic. The heroine in this is a journalism student being interviewed on stage. She's in the audience and they keep catching each other's eye. Who hasn't wanted to be that one girl in the crowd that the guy on the stage has been eyeing the entire time? And that's exactly what happens in this book. And the story also has some really good groveling in it. 
and also that trilogy needs to be read in order. So next is a book that I actually have not read yet by Lauren Rowe, however I do own it, and it is Countdown to Killing Curtis. I do not know much about this book because the synopsis is delightfully vague, and I always feel like synopses should be vague. The only thing I know about it is that it's about a woman who loves her husband but has been planning to kill him. So I don't even know what this falls under. Is it romantic suspense? I don't know, but it sounds really, really interesting, and it sounds like very outside of what Lauren Rowe typically writes, and I'm very interested to see what this book is all about. And then Lauren Rowe has also written three misadventures stories. First one is Misadventures on a Night Shift, and this is another rock star romance, but in this romance, the rock star is staying at a hotel that the heroine works at. So she works at a hotel, and they meet because I think she has to bring something up to his room. All of these that Lauren Rowe writes are super short and sweet and this one was really good. It wasn't my favorite one. I will get to my favorite misadventure stories that she wrote but I did really like it. So another one of her misadventures books is Misadventures on the Rebound. This one is about a heroine who is determined to go to her high school reunion and show off like her new body, her new job, her great life to this football player that I guess took her virginity and like left her hanging after that. The problem is, is that the day that she's about to leave to go to this reunion, she loses her job, her boyfriend breaks up with her, and she's just having like a terrible day. So she goes to this bar and then she ends up meeting this stranger and they hit it off as Lauren Rowe characters do. They have a ton of chemistry and he ends up joining her on this road trip to her reunion and there's fake dating element because they pretend that they're together so that she can like show him off at this reunion and it's such a great premise for a great romance and then last but not least of the misadventures series is my all-time favorite lauren rowe book that is misadventures of a college girl i am obsessed with this book for so many reasons. This one is a new adult, obviously, college sports romance, and it's between a football player who is destined to play pro, and the heroine is a virgin, which I know I have said multiple times I hate the virgin heroine, but this is the virgin heroine done so right. And she has dreams of becoming a Broadway star, and we all know how much I love Broadway. And this one, the reason why I love it so much and the reason why the virginal heroine trope doesn't annoy me is because she is determined to lose her virginity. In fact, when she meets the hero, it's because her and her roommate are going to the party specifically so she can find a playboy to lose her virginity to because she wants it to be a good first time. And her and her roommate have decided that in order for it to be good, she has to sleep with a guy who is an absolute playboy who has slept around because he probably knows his way around a bed. She ends up meeting the hero who is a playboy and she is determined to sleep with him and lose her virginity. It's supposed to be a one night stand but then it turns into him like kind of teaching her and showing her the ropes and everything and then feelings get involved. It has one of the healthiest relationships I've ever read in a romance novel and I so appreciate that it's in a new adult romance novel. Aside from that, like the banter is great. The way that she gets along with like his teammates and his friends and stuff is so great. I just love it so much. There's so much to love about this book and a lot of it is because of how healthy their relationship is and how much they support each other's dreams. And then last but not least is a book that she doesn't list on her website and I'm not entirely sure why, but she has written it. It's a very short novella that I read for, I think, maybe it was Smedathon. I read it for some readathon, and I really liked it. It's called The Secret Note, and it's a younger brother's best friend trope, and it's a second chance romance. Time passes and then they meet again. I don't really want to say too much about it because it is a novella, but it's really good. Highly recommend it. Pretty sure it is on Kindle Unlimited. I do want to mention that Lauren Rowe is coming out with a new book that I'm so excited about, coming out on the 27th of July, and I am dying to read it. It's called Smitten, and the two main characters in this one are characters that are from both the Morgan Brothers series and the Reed River series. At least one of the characters is from the Morgan Brothers series. He is part of the band that's in Rockstar. You already see the chemistry between these two characters in the Reed Rivers trilogy. I'm really excited to get this book and it's just a standalone. I don't know that she necessarily planned on writing this book when she was writing the Reed Rivers trilogy and definitely not when she was writing the Morgan Brothers series, 
but I think their romance just kind of snuck up on her as she was writing the Reed Rivers trilogy. And like I said, you already see the chemistry between these two characters, so I am dying to read their book. What's interesting about this is I don't think the hero is like your typical hero like these guys. I think he is not really that attractive, so I'm interested to see what she does with this. And I can't wait to read it. Can't wait for the 27th. All right, guys, that's it. That is my guide to Lauren Rowe. I hope this inspires you to pick up one of her books if you haven't already. If you have and you love them, let's talk about it down in the comments below. If if you haven't, let me know what you're most excited for. And as always, happy reading.